At the top of Kirk Street, in the Fife village of Kouris, lie the remains of its old abbey. In May 1559, the Kirk destroyers, as they were known, went about with sticks and spades and with John Knox in their heads, dinging the abbey's doon. Dunfermline Abbey was destroyed in 1560 and these destructive forces made their way west towards Stirling, so Curus most likely was hit by them. The remains of the abbey sit overlooking the royal borough and it must have been quite a magnificent place in its heyday. It was founded in 1217 by Malcolm, 7th Earl of Fife, although there are carved stones there dating from the 8th or 9th century, which give credence that there was a religious presence there at that time. It was dedicated to the Virgin Mary and St Serf, who is said to have founded the village of Curus. The monks belonged to the Cistercian Order, founded by St Benedict of Clairvaux. The monks who came to the abbey originated from the abbey at Kinloss in Murray, and the first abbot of Curis, Hugh, had been a prior at the Murrayshire Abbey. Hugh died in 1232, but by the time of his death, Curis had around 100 monks and as many as 135 probationers or novices. He was followed by William Ramsay, then another abbot, Hugh, who was translated to Curis from Melrose. So far, all the abbots had been brought in, but that changed in 1252, when Michael, the porter, was elected. In 1229, Earl Malcolm granted the lands of Crombie in the parish of Torriburn to Curis, and in the years following, Many lands were seized in the name of the abbey. He died in 1230 and was buried in the abbey. By the time of the Reformation in the 16th century, there were only nine monks left, with all the novices leaving, fleeing for their lives. Five of the monks embraced Protestantism, but four couldn't bring themselves to leave their faith. In 1402, a council was assembled at Curis to decide the place of confinement of David Stuart, Duke of Rothsey, and Robert III's eldest son. The meeting was presided over by the king's brother, Robert, Duke of Albany. The king's actual name was John, who saw David as his rival for the crown. As such, the young man was already imprisoned in St Andrew's Castle, having been invited by his uncle to Fife, where he was captured. At the meeting in Curis, it was decided to throw the young man in a dungeon at Falkland Palace, where he died on 26 March 1402, aged 23, having been starved to death. Around 1450, Abbot Robert Marshall commissioned a beautifully illustrated psalter and in the early 16th century, the Abbey's scriptorium received orders for books for Stirling Castle's Chapel Royal. Kinloss too ordered books from Curis. In 1490, John Hogg, the abbot at the time, elected Curis as a borough of barony, and this was granted. Around 1500, Further building took place with the construction of the new West Tower and the rebuilding of the choir. The nave, dating from the 13th century and only used by lay brethren, was demolished at the same time, with the exception of its south wall. Following the death of Abbot James Stewart in 1513, commendators or lay administrators took over for the crown. In 1525, Thomas, the abbot, was appointed as a commissioner for holding Parliament. In 1530, the abbot Sir James Ingalls was murdered, and on 1st March, the Laird of Tully Allen was beheaded for the crime, along with a monk who was chief author 
of the abbot's slaughter. Robert Blackadder, the Archbishop of Glasgow in 1500, was the brother of Patrick Blackadder, the Laird of Tully Allen. In 1503, he built a chapel at the spot where St Mungo was born. The abbots of Curis and the Blackadders weren't exactly on friendly terms because of the erection and endowment of the chapel, and the relationship was further strained when Abbot Ingalls granted the lease of lands at Balgoni, tenanted by Patrick Blackadder, to John Erskine, Fifth Lord Erskine. Ingalls knew Erskine well, as he'd been made Chancellor of the Chapel Royal in Stirling in 1527, before being appointed abbot at Curus. And Erskine had been appointed keeper of James V at Stirling, remaining close to him until he died in 1542, when his infant daughter Mary became queen. The abbot and the laird met at Lone Head near Rosyth, where the abbot was murdered by him and the monk, William Lothian. The day before his execution, Lothian was deprived of his orders on a public scaffold in Edinburgh in front of the king, James V, and his mother, Margaret Tudor. A large crowd also witnessed the shaming of the monk. He was then handed over to Archibald Campbell, 4th Duke of Argyll, who was Chief Justice. Both he and Blackadder were beheaded the next day. They were not the only ones to stand trial. Robert Manderston, James Mitchell and William Hutton, who are thought to have been servants of Blackadder, were also brought to trial, but acquitted. The body of the abbot was laid to rest in the chapter house of Curus Abbey. The last abbot of Curus was John Colville, and a relative, William Colville, was also commendator alongside him. The commendator was one of those who signed the Confession of Faith in 1560. In 1913, the remains of Curus Abbey were taken into state care, and seven years later, excavations took place at the site over the following three years. It was during these works that the cloister ranges were discovered. The ruins are interesting. There are remains of the groined roof and arches of the Great Hall, and a vaulted passage leads through a 13th century doorway. The refectory, which would have been a large hall for dining in, and other buildings have been lost, but are thought to have been situated in the lower man's garden. Above the refectory for the lay brethren would have been the dormitory, and steps to the sleeping quarters can be seen above the parlour doorway. There is a vaulted room beneath it, thought to have been the kitchen, and there was a latrine in the west wall. The refectory for the monks was in the south range, but only the undercroft remains. As mentioned, the nave of the abbey has disappeared except for the south wall which extends west towards the churchyard gate. The tower, dating from the 1500s when the rebuilding took place under Abbot Andrew Mason, remains, and from the Bartizan, commanding views over the old pantile roofs of the village and over the River Forth, are breathtaking. The lower story of the tower forms a porch to the new church, and immediately above was where women accused of witchcraft were imprisoned. The ruins of Curus Abbey are historically significant, and it has been designated as a scheduled monument. <laughs>